Well, hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, this week we covered a real challenging uh, text and it was the fourth and fifth uh, confrontations that Jesus had uh, with the Pharisees that Mark tells us about. Um, and they centered in and around uh, the Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath had uh, enormous meaning uh, to the Hebrew nation in the days uh, of Jesus. Uh, but the Pharisees had added um, many, many rules and regulations about the Sabbath that were in addition to the Old Testament, the, Mo the Mosaic law. And so we learn in these two encounters, and, and the first encounter, uh, Jesus and his disciples are, are hungry. And so they pluck grains um, from the field, and the Pharisees see him, and they, and they say basically, uh, why is he doing what's not lawful on the Sabbath? And it's necessary to understand what they're talking about is their own written rules written after uh, the Mosaic law. And so they said what Jesus did constituted work, and Jesus does a beautiful job in referencing them back uh, to an Old Testament scripture that's found in 1 Samuel where a, a high priest um, allows their ceremonial law to be surpassed by compassion to King David uh, and his men. And in Matthew's account, uh, Jesus adds uh, the quotation of Hosea 6.6, 6, uh, where God says, I desire mercy uh, and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than a burnt offering. And it comes around to what Jesus shows us in this first confrontation is do we long to know more of God? You know, I agree with, with Spurgeon where he said, he that does not long to know more of Christ knows nothing of him. And it begs the question, do we, do we long to know more of Christ, his unsearchable riches, his unsearchable love for us to continually get in his word, to learn more about him so that we can be more like him? That, that's the key to, to us walking this out as a Christ follower. Uh, the second account uh, even is more convicting to me because uh, Jesus is in a synagogue on another Sabbath and the Pharisees uh, watch him uh, looking at a man uh, with a withered hand. And the Pharisees had written again in their rule book, basically, that it was unlawful to improve anyone's physical health on the Sabbath. It was deemed as work. Well, Jesus knew this. He knew there was nothing in the Mosaic law that, that prohibited that. And so Jesus it says in verse 4 of Mark 3, it says he looked at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. There's, a, there's an amazing life lesson here that we, not only was Jesus grieved then, but we grieve the Holy Spirit when we act like these Pharisees. And, and a text that we brought out that complemented Mark uh, 2 and 3 so beautifully was Ephesians 4, uh, where Paul teaches the church. He, he says, hey, listen, if you're in Christ... Folks, listen, if we're in Christ, we are automatically a member of his body, automatically. And it's our job to build up the body. It's our job to build up and edify the church. And he says in verses four, one through six of chapter four of Ephesians that we're to do that with humility and patience. And then in verses 11 through 16, he says, speak the truth in love that makes the body grow and builds itself up in love. Remember, nowhere are we commanded by God to grow his church. We're commanded to make disciples and the church automatically grows as we build it up in love. And then it culminated and we unpacked verses 29 through 32 of Ephesians 4, which relates so well to this account that Jesus had. It says, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth. And, and, and then Paul says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We unpacked what that word meant. It meant to cause extreme emotional distress. Folks, listen, in God's sovereignty and his providence, and, and our finite minds cannot grasp this, but the truth is God in his sovereignty loves us so much that he chooses to hurt when we grieve him, when we sin. And Paul gives us exactly what that is. He says, uh, don't, don't be angry. Don't have any bitterness. Don't slander. Don't gossip is what he talks about. Have unrighteous anger. When we do, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And as that man's hand was withered, it makes us wither up and grow spiritually dry and bitter. And then he gives the positive command, be kind, tender hearted with one another, forgive others as God in Christ forgave you. You know, last week, this studying through this pointed out sin in my life with anger. And, and thank God that he saw fit to start bringing this word to my brain and so the first thing I did was I practiced James 5. What he says, he says, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. 
Folks, listen, there's some of us that are withering up, drying up spiritually. Folks, we need, to for, we need to forgive others and then we need to confess our sins. So as you talk about this with your family or your, or your friends, listen, ask God to search your heart. Is there anger or bitterness uh, that you have or, or slander or gossip? Because when we do that, we literally, we hurt God. We hurt him. And so James 5 is clear, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. Let's confess our sins. The forgiveness is there. It was done at the cross. The forgiveness is there and we will continue to grow and build up this body and be conformed more and more and more into the image of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Thanks so much. Take care.